Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody back to the Hitting the Turnbuckle channel. I am your host, Adam Cousins, and I'm going through last week's Dynamite, uh, AEW Dynamite Holiday Bash. Now, they had a load of Continental Classic matches. We had a number one contendership match for the Women's Championship, and we also had Commander versus Roddy Strong. Uh, the show opened up with Swerve and Roosh uh, in the Continental Classic. Swerve was on nine points. Roosh was on six. Uh, this match was an absolute brilliant way to kick off the show heck of a battle swerve right now is probably in the best run of his career roosh absolutely bought it tonight as well and the storyline injuries um they was playing out through this match as well and throughout the tournament really and it played nicely into this match uh, obviously swerve still suffering from the match we've had the death match with hangman adam page but the swerve stomp um, got the one, two, three. Swerve's getting a hell of a reaction from the crowd. Roosh, it was, you know, Roosh had a great out in as well. So it didn't do any harm to Roosh uh, losing this match. Swerve Strickland moves on to 12 points. Uh, more about that one later on. Uh, Chris Jericho was next with a really nice, you know, I would say honest promo with Kenny Omega out with diverticulitis. Um, and basically saying that the match between the Golden Jets uh, uh, and Big Bill and Ricky Starks won't be happening at the moment. And everyone is pulling for Kenny. Uh, he does do the signature uh, Kenny Omega uh, uh, goodbye, which Dave normally does on, on the AEW shows. Um, but it was very, very honest and it felt real. And sometimes, you know, a promo doesn't have to be serious. Or well, it does have to be serious, but it has to have that element of realism to it. And, and Chris done that really, really nicely. Um, the next match was the Battle of the Zero Pointers in the Continental Classic. Mark Briscoe and Jay Lethal. Um this match felt like old school Ring of Honor. It was absolutely brilliant. I loved every second of it. Both men are already eliminated, by the way. They both had zero points. They weren't going to matter. You know, it weren't going to matter who wins and who losses. So I don't think the lo the loser of this match really harmed it in any way. Um, but it didn't matter that they had zero points. They were eliminated. I feel this match was, you could tell, it was about pride. They both wanted to win. Uh, 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 Mark Briscoe picks up the win with the J with the J Driller uh, on Jay Lethal, and I think next year Jay Lethal will come away from uh, you know Jarrett and Satnam and and uh, Sanjay Dutton try and carve his own uh, carve his own path in AEW, and hopefully we'll see more of Mark Briscoe uh, together as well, uh, and trying to maybe Briscoe tries for the title. Um, now, the next fit, which is quite interesting. So Samoa Joe is here at this point. He says, every time a devil attacks somebody, you see footage of that attack. But when MJF was attacked, there was no footage. Which is really, really interesting. So, you know, MJF basically then shows up. Joe pushes him out of the way. The masked goons go to attack them. Then they go back to back and the lights come out. The lights go out. The devil comes on the screen. And then it says what? And then writing comes up. Where can you go? Who can you trust? Next week, will you accept a challenge for your Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships? Are you a hero, Max? Before MJF can even ask Joe, Joe grabs the mic and says he accepts, which is interesting. Uh, Rocky Romero uh, backstage with best friends and Rocky Romero. And he wants to look at new international opportunities. And Cassidy accepts. Quite weird. Orange Cassidy accepted it. Rocky Romero was like, well, hang on, I didn't mean that. But it was quite quite a funny one. But it does move on to Rampage, where Orange Cassidy puts his international title on the line against Rocky Romero. We'll be reviewing Rampage, and you'll be able to see what we think of that uh, uh, on the show later on. Timeless Tony Storm joined the commentary table for the number one contendership match for her title between uh, Riho and Soraya. Um, you know what? The... Tony Storm on commentary is just worth the just worth it just for this. Show. The match itself wasn't great. It was okay. Um, it, it was you know, it just kind of existed. There, it just didn't feel there wasn't like a big fight feel about it. I don't know how well these two know each other because he didn't seem to connect in the ring very well. Uh, anyway, the winner of this was Riho. Um, she done the diving, uh, diving double knees, and then the Meteora 
to get the win. And that was the shock. We didn't really see that coming. I was expecting Soraya to pick up the victory and have another match with, with Tony Storm. But no, she didn't. And as Tony Storm hits the ring, um, she gets she gets taken out by Rio. And as she looks for the 619, and Maria May makes a save. So now Rio goes against Tony Storm at World's End on the 30th of December, which should be an interesting match uh, itself. Now, Tony Schiavone interrupts everybody with a prepared statement from Christian Cage. Christian Cage says Oklahoma City should shut up. Christian has taken Nick Wayne on vacation and he'll return on collision on Saturday to answer uh, Copeland's challenge for a no disqualification match at World's End. Christian Cage being Christian Cage. Absolutely fantastic. Um, at this point, Samoa Joe's at the back with MJF arguing. MJF says Joe isn't a great security guard. As he finds a devil's moose out, uh, finds a devil's mask outside the door of the Mobile Embassy. MJF pulls Prince Nana out, but here's Swerve. So it's interesting now that he's still was saying, hey, you're the one that was the uh, the devil, which is interesting. And due to the devil's fascination with Hangman Page as well. So it's kind of interesting um, that how that they're trying to pan it out that Swerve's the devil, but Swerve, I'm sure, was in the ring when one of them got attacked. Anyway, Mogul Embassy opened the door. Samoa Joe removes MJF from the situation. So interesting they're trying to put Swerve into this. Uh, funnily enough, the next match was Roddy Strong with the Kingdom and Commander. This was, I mean, Roddy is such a great professional wrestler. He doesn't need a gimmick. You know, he doesn't need it. He just, just put him in the ring, let him do his work. And it was pretty strong, pretty much dominated this match. Uh, with Commander. Commander got his offense in. It was, you know, the usual Commander offense that you receive, that you see week in, week out. Um, but he does, does the Roddy does the end of heartbreak uh, or heartache, uh, and, and it's all over. Uh, and that is it. And Roddy wins. Really good match. I like Roddy Strong. Strong is so good. And funnily enough, at ringside, there was a sign saying MJF is the devil, and Roderick Strong held it up. And I do really think that the, that is a smokescreen. I don't think MJF is the devil. I do think it's somebody else. I'm not quite sure who, but I think it's somebody else. Um, and basically, backstage, Roddy, Roddy says to Joe, you need to wake up and realise that MJF is the devil. There we go. Interesting. Uh, John Moxley, Jay White was next. Whoa, main event. This was absolutely phenomenal. I wish this match had had another five or ten minutes. Um, but a surprise, really. If you think about how the tournament's gone on, this was a bit of a surprise. Jay White picked up the win with the Blade Runner um, on John Moxley, and he's on 12. Moxley's on 12. And as you already saw earlier on, in the opening contest of the, of the show, Swerve Strickland moved on to 12 points. Very, very interesting. So what happens on that? Well, well what happens... I tell you, because as that match finished, whose house? Swerve's house comes up. And next week on Dynamite, it's going to be Moxley, Swerve and White, with the winner being crowned the Goal League champion and going on to World's End to face the winner of the Blue League, which we'll find out who it is again. And then White clips Moxley's knee for good pleasure, the good measure at the end. Look, the Continental Classic is already the best tournament AEW has ever done. The feel, well, not even AEW, I would say it's one of the best tournaments, you know, I've seen. Largely due to the fact that they've got wrestlers that can just go in the ring. They can deliver high-level, great matches. And off the back of that, you get the MJF situation. So you've got lots of stuff going on on Dynamite. And it's really made it for an interesting, you know, last four, four five weeks. And I think AEW have knocked it out of the park recently in terms of having... Actual matches that mean something and a great storyline development elsewhere. So kudos to AEW. It has been great. But guys, this has been the Holiday Bash review of AEW Dynamite. I'll be back to do collisions very, very soon as well. And Rampage. And we'll put that all on the channel. Search on the socials at HTT Buckle on Twitter. Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast on all other social outlets. And until next time, everybody, buckle down and stay safe.